as a physics teacher, I use lots of simulation and hands-on experiment to help my students understand physics topic such as electricity. As a part of AMS Research Action Project, recently I have developed a hypothesis. Simulation is better than hands-on experiment. I have collected lots of data through a series of interviews. Let's take a look. Uh, I support um, hands-on experiments more because um, to begin with, it's more you can apply it to a lot more things. Um, I think I support the simulation better because although it's fixed and you don't really learn anything from it, but when you um, I think you I think you just get the overall idea using the simulation, so you know what you're supposed to be finding. I chose hands-on because I feel like I like touching and making sure I know what I'm doing first before I go on the computer and do the same thing. And I'm Jared. Uh, I think hands-on is better because unlike simulations, hands-on actually will make you do more work and like the experiments can be more exciting than looking at a screen, like seeing it in front of you rather than at the screen. My name is Eric and I prefer hands-on experiments because I believe when you use simulations, they cause more of a isolation when you're trying to learn with physics. However, with hands-on, you can form groups and allow each other to combine all your known knowledge to solve problems Ooh, together. Actually, an answer. After conducting a series of interviews, we seem to have reached a consensus that simulation is for understanding and hands-on experiment is collect to the empirical data. Simulations for Simulation. data, hands-on experiments for the experience though. I, I like that simulation for understanding and yeah. hands-on experiment for data yeah. put it other way around simulation for understanding I, I really like that oh, what about you Sim simulation for understanding the natural phenomena once you have full understanding then you do experiment to to for what for empirical data for empirical data However, we still wanted to reach out scientist uh, Dr. Daniel Kavat for uh, for his opinion. I think when you're when you're starting out, some hands-on experience is good. I think especially with something like electricity that uh, isn't so familiar to people in everyday life. Everybody has the experience of throwing a ball, pushing on something, and watching it. But in, in everyday life, people don't have so much experience with electricity. So I think giving them some tangible hands on experience is good. But then once they develop some confidence and develop some understanding, then simulations can actually be clearer and easier to understand. Because real life experiments are often complicated, don't quite work the way you expect, and it's, it's hard to do an experiment perfectly. So once you have a little bit of experience and background, then a simulation can be a very effective. Mm -hmm. You want to just attach it? Yeah, sure. Okay, mm -hmm. so now this. <coughs> Where's the nails? This goes here. Here. And now we take another one, pass one. This goes here. It's not lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the other way. You have to figure that out the way it's not lining up. Maybe it's this way. Hello, I'm Steven and today I will be using the simulation to create a series circuit that will light up one bulb. Um, first I got a couple of wires and I'm using a rectangular shape. 
we will be using wires and I'm going to make a rectangular shape because when making circuits it's conventional to use a rectangular shape and in the middle of these wires we call this uh, a junction middle of the two wires we call the space the junction then we insert a battery inside the circuit but then we get a short circuit um, this is because there is no resistance inside of the circuit yet to suck up the power so we have to add a bulb and then this problem will be fixed Connect it and boom, it's lit. There's a current using this ammeter that measures the amps right here. We're going to split the junction, creating an opening so I'm able to place the ammeter in between. The reading that we have is 0 0.90 amps to measure the voltage. Um, we have 8.9999. When I do the hands-on experiments, we have to use um, the real-life materials. Um, for example, a, a bulb like this, a LED bulb, um, a wire like this, um, alligator clip, and a voltmeter and a ammeter just like this um, together in one. Since I was able to do the simulated series circuit successfully, I'm now confident that I will be able to do the hands-on lemon battery experiment. I'm going to teach you how to make a lemon battery. Um, we'll be using six items. Um, one, eleven which has, this is the source of um, the electrolytes, the lemon acid inside of the lemon, to um, a nail, a galvanized nail. This has zinc, which we will need to make a anode. Uh, copper wire, we will be using this as a cathode we need the copper no. uh led bulb alligator clips and a voltmeter to measure the voltage of the setup um i'm going to make two terminals um one is the anode using the zinc Insert it to the lemon. And the second, the cathode. With the copper wire wrapped around so that there's a connection. It can't be this slim, but it has to be. Enough copper. These two are neutral. This has the atomic number 30, this one 29. Um, we used these items because they're easily accessible. Our neutral, this has the atomic number 30, this one has the atomic number 29. 30 protons, 29. It, and it reacts with the electrolytes. It, the zinc likes to give up electrons and the copper wire likes to receive electrons. But this can't happen unless you make a bridge using the alligator clips, like this. And to do that, this becomes a cation, which is positive. And this becomes a an ion, 
which is negative. And now I'm going to use five lemons to make a series circuit and measure the voltage. The negative of this battery would connect to the positive of the second battery. Make sure that you do that. And then all you'd have to do is connect the negative with the voltmeter. Let's see what the reading says. It's 15. 15. So with two lemons, you would have 15 divided by 10, which is 1.5 volts. Well, using the information and the direct relationship, we can infer that using five, it would take approximately three volts. And now I'm going to attach all five and light up the LED. This LED requires two volts to um, power it, two volts. to go positive yeah. negative let me organize Positive connected with the negative. Positive connected on this side with the negative of the fourth battery. Positive of the fourth battery is connected with the, oh, sorry, with the negative of the fifth. I'm not using the last alligator clue. Can it be positive? Of this one, the negative of the first, the fifth, positive of the fifth, negative of the first. The short side on the LED is the positive, and the long side is the negative. So, positive to positive. Try not to put like charges together because the like charges would repel positive and positive or negative and negative. Um, you'd have to put it opposite because opposites are try. Okay. Um, short side, positive, positive of the fifth, connected to the long side, negative, negative of the first. Now you can see that the LED light is lit. As you can see, um, the LED bulb is lit. Um, this is because I used the chemistry to make the five batteries and I use the physics to create a series circuit from the batteries to light up this LED bulb. In other words, to explain the chemistry of the lemon battery in front of you. So first we make two terminals. 
one zinc with the atomic number of 30. This means that it has 30 protons. And then the second terminal, copper, with the atomic number 29. This means it has 29. The name of the terminal <coughs> for zinc is anode. A-N-N-O-D-E. -N -N -E. The name of the terminal for copper is cathode. C-A-T-H-O-D-E. -E. And we could use many materials that have the atomic number 30 or 29, but we chose a nail, for a galvanized nail for zinc and a penny for copper because these items are easily accessible. A, a little more chemistry. Um, both of these are neutral, meaning that they have the same number of protons and electrons. And this one over here is called a zinc atom. And this one over here is called a copper atom. Um, now we need a now we need a source of electrolytes. We could use anything: um, potatoes, watermelon, yourself, your conductor. But we're going to use um, lemon acid because. Is, is it's a great source for electrolytes, and that's what we need. Let me draw this. Connect. Draw this rectangle. Lemon acid. Um, when we connect these, symbolically connect, connect it, then this begins to, the zinc begins to interact with the electrolytes, and it then becomes ready to give up electrons, because this is very sensitive to the, um, the zinc is very sensitive to the electrolytes, and it becomes ready to give up electrons. And for the copper, it becomes ready to receive the electrons. However, this can't happen because they aren't connected. We need a bridge to connect these two, zinc and copper. Um, today we're using the alligator clip because it has aluminum and it's easy to find. Okay, nice. I'll draw a bridge. Oh, different color. Um, 
now has a path to move um, to leave the zinc galvanized nail and head over to the copper penny. This is the fridge. Using the wire, when, now when this happens and the electrons transfer, uh, this becomes positively charged. Less electrons. This becomes negatively charged because it gains so many electrons. Now called a cation for being positive, and this is an anion for being negative. Um, this statement and this statement are no longer true, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So the cation and the anion together make a potential difference between the two terminals. Um, another name for this in physics is voltage. Finally, my experiment shows that using the lemon battery, let me make a table. Um, lemons on one side, voltage on the other. It gave me 1.5 volt. Using three, it gave me 2.6 volt. This has 29. Tw uh, the, 20, the, the numbers are getting confusing because they're yeah. so close. And it's That's like, right. By using my cell, because I'm also a source of electrolyte, as Steve explained. So I'm going to put this side in my tongue and this side in my tongue. And that should light up the bulb. Let's see. However, we do not recommend you to do that at home unless it is less than 10 volt. Alligator clips. Alligator clips. Yes. Uh, one, two, three, four. So these five. are the alligator clips. Five. How much did we use? Five or six? It doesn't matter. Take one. Daddy, Simulation for STEM education. Simulation for STEM education. Sunlight takes eight minutes just to reach your eyes. Inside, it's all atoms making up our minds. Think that learning science isn't meant for you Or just not cool There are formulas to prove it now Better study up, I'll show you how We're about to throw some science down Evolution made your brain, heart, spinal cord And also your eyes Medicine made the vaccines, technologies that keep you alive